up from Mexico. They're very close to uh, coming through Mach 1. I imagine you know, the coyotes out in the desert will, will hear that shortly. Mm -hmm. So will we, I hope. <laughs> If you're wondering where that picture comes from, it comes from one of the so-called chase planes that they have observing the spacecraft, now an airplane, as it returns from space. We're just about uh, at the place where the <coughs> chase planes will try to join on the shuttle, come up very close. That's, a, that's always a tough job, tough piloting job. Today, uh, Dick Covey will be the guy that is assigned that task. Mach point nine and speed brakes going to 100% now. Three and a half minutes from touchdown. 38,000 feet. Range 20 miles. Of course, uh, the shuttle will be making a right turn in. So we'll see him. There it is going overhead. Thirty thousand feet. You know you have everything to, looking good. You have to pinch yourself and remind uh, that that about half an hour ago, forty-five minutes There's ago, that was way up in space. Now, passing twenty-six thousand. That's good. right. But, uh, Dropped a long way, 130 a mile drop. Huh? 13 miles range. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Turning right now into runway 17. They're in the right turn. At 20,000 feet. To uh, in a moment straighten out and be lined up at the landing runway. Range 10 miles. <clears throat> Houston wins 190 at one point. That was the sonic boom. Out of 15,000 feet. Two papi lines here. Air speed 270. Go for auto to enter glide club. Go for auto at 12,000 feet. Okay, we're on auto, Houston. Columbia now in auto land. Out of 10,000 feet at 288. Body flaps and trail. Roger. Five thousand feet. Airspeed two eighty. Range about three miles. Three flyers. Roger. Thousand feet. Well, there it is, man. 
<laughs> I guess we all ought to applaud. That was a great flight. The, the great in the lapse time of touchdown, uh, unofficially, eight days, zero hours, four minutes, 49 seconds. That was by far the longest flight for the shuttle to date, about uh, four times longer than any previous flight. Yep. Eight hours, eight days, four minutes, and 49 seconds. 129 and I guess about two-thirds way around the world at an altitude of 150 miles up in space. And they had their problems that they overcame every one of them, including a problem that was produced by nature, high winds, rains, and they overcame those. There it is, all beat up. When you look at a spacecraft like that, as I have um, in person a couple of times before, there are burns okay, on it, and it looks like a pretty okay, used Columbia, piece of equipment. Home. That was a beautiful job. I think there's stains across it, uh, in particular from the entry, that you can notice, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. But it won't uh, take them very long to turn it around and have it ready to go again. That's right. Well, it was worth the wait. It's beautiful weather out there today, isn't it? Now, the astronauts will be in there for quite some time because there are... Convoy 1, this is Columbia, how do you read? Convoy 1, Columbia, please allow me to say how many. Welcome home. Say your last care to you. There are uh, still in the spacecraft some toxic and some lethal fluids that have to be handled with some care. The uh, astronauts themselves have to undergo a brief physical examination. Lots will be going on here. And uh, I'd like to get uh, the reaction of uh, Robert Bazell, our science correspondent, who's at uh, White Sands and who saw this come in uh, himself. Bob, are you there? I sure am, John. That was certainly beautiful. That was, uh, I've seen the, the first two as well as this one, and it was, uh, it was just gorgeous. It couldn't look better. What do you think, uh, Fitzhugh Fulton, the test pilot? Well, it certainly looked good to me. Uh, the whole thing looked uh, just about the way it was uh, picture planned, and uh, the the approach to landing, the flare out, and the uh, touchdown, and then after as he as he approached the point of putting the nose gear down, I noticed he made a little pitch change in the uh, shuttle, and I think that was to test out the elevator effectiveness at low speed. So, so that wasn't a problem, it was just a test. No, that's right. It was just another one of the tests I'm sure was programmed in there. It was a very clear day here today, John, and we saw it much farther away than, than we had seen it at Edwards Air Force Base. So people here were cheering and shouting all, all the way down, and, and finally a touchdown. You could, you could hear the screams and shouts from all over the place. It was really beautiful. Now, on our screen, we can see, and I guess you can see with your eye, Bob, some of the, uh, uh, the vehicles that are moving up. The one to your left there on the screen is called the Orbiter Crew Hatch Access Vehicle. I call it the stairs. Uh, they, what they do is they will move that up, uh, and once they make sure that there are, there are no um, toxic gases in the area, and you see trucks moving in now that have to do with that, uh, they will move the stairs over to the aircraft and the doctor will go in and then ultimately, but probably quite a long time from now, the, the astronauts themselves, Jack Lausma and Gordo Fullerton, will come out uh, to the cheers John? of the technicians. John, yeah. one of the things about this mission is that uh, the astronauts are scheduled to come out sooner than they had on previous missions. They, I think the, the first two crews were a little bit upset about how much time they had to spend in there going over tests. So there'll be a substitute crew that are going to go in there for them. And I think we should see them today if everything goes normally uh, a bit sooner than we saw the first two crews come out. All right, there, there it is, that whole little army of vehicles. Those all, ones you see on your screen there uh, that are moving in had to be sent on trains 1,000 miles from Edwards Air Force Base in California. Two special trains carried all of this stuff. And uh, they, uh, this, is, this shows you a project that is still in the process of, of growing up. Uh, they don't have this uh, little fleet of vehicles that meet the aircraft all over the country. They only have a couple of them, one at, K at the Kennedy Space Center and the one you've seen, which has been transported here. When the shuttle gets itself going, when Vance Brand starts flying it in November, uh, it will land at Cape Kennedy, and, uh, and those vehicles will be there. But uh, there it is, um, all hail Columbia, and we'll be back after we give our stations a chance to identify themselves.